We are coming to you live from the Ministry of Agriculture. Today, my guest would be the Honorable Minister for Agriculture, um, who is no other person than Dr. Demba Sabali. Uh, Dr. Sabali, an Honorable, welcome to the FATO Network. Thank you so much for the invitation. Well, Doctor, we understand that agriculture is one key component of every nation. And as Minister of Agriculture, mm. uh, we would want to know um, how important is agriculture to the Gambia's economy? Thank you very much, um, Fatu Network, and I'll say a very good afternoon to all your viewers, both locally and internationally. And your question is very pertinent, and it's a very usual question. How important is agriculture to the Gambian economy? Currently, agriculture um, has over 26% of our gross domestic product. That's how important um, agriculture is to the economy. But in fact, it's way beyond that. Um, agriculture, if all the statistics are collected, is contributing way in the excess of 30 something percent to Gambia's GDP. Thank you so much. Um, we understand with the Minister of Agriculture, you have a lot of policies all geared towards addressing mm -hmm. um, the plight of farmers and improving the livelihood of people. Okay. Now, could you tell us one of the biggest issues or policy mm -hmm. uh, that has issues that is you're currently facing as a ministry? Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, we have the Ministry of Agriculture also encompasses the livestock um, sector, just to make some clarity. Um, currently, we have the Gambia National Agricultural Investment Plan. This is a policy document that guides us as to what the framework will be in terms of agricultural investment. And also our roadmap towards rice self-sufficiency by 2030. These policy documents are mainly for crops, and we also have the National Livestock Master Plan, which also is from 2023. We just um, got a cabinet clearance for that one, all the way to 2030. And this roadmap is supposed to lead us to self-sufficiency in small ruminant, that is for goat, sheep, and even for cattle. So these two policy documents are very, very important, and they are the roadmap for our self-sufficiency, both in food and in animal protein. When you talk about um, in Romulans, we understand sometimes when it comes to during the Feast of um, Tobaski, mm -hmm. we face a lot of challenges because most of the rams that, or Romulans that are coming in mm -hmm. are either from Senegal, Mauritania, or, or the other neighboring countries, which actually has a huge cost on the average Gambians. Right. Now, could you take us through as to how this policy would address this issue? Very good question. Actually, currently, we have a project called the Small Ruminant Production Enhancement Project. And what the project is doing currently, it has built about 60 breeding sites and 60 uh, fattening sites. And these sites are all manned by youth and women who have been into small ruminant rearing already. The project comes to support them. And each of them not only have their facility built for them by the project, but they are also given 70 small ruminants for free. Now, this will be sites of multiplication. This, we think, will now enhance the small ruminant multiplication in this country. But that aside, the project also has built 20 animal drinking points in all the major animal sites in this country. And this, we think, is going to stop our herdsmen from moving across the border just because of water shortage. And that aside, this year, the project also supported the Department of Livestock Service to vaccinate every small um, ruminant in this country against PPR, which is a major killer disease against our goats and sheep. So the project, not only have they built uh, water facilities, um, veterinary services, 15 veterinary um, outlets so that their animals are taken care of, but also they vaccinated all these animals and they, they're supporting these breeding sites and fattening sites all geared towards having us self-sufficient in small ruminant in the nearest future. Well, my next question would be, um, what's the ministry doing to stimulate agricultural growth? You've made mention of some of these mm -hmm. um, projects. But what, aside from that, what else is your ministry doing to stimulate the growth of agriculture in the Gambia? Over $1,200 per bag compared to what we spent buying the fertilizer from across uh, from abroad so fertilizer was heavily subsidized came in on time way before the rain start and the selling points are way accessible 
we have ensured that no Gambian go beyond 10 to 15 kilometers to go and look for fertilizer. So sufficient selling point and high quality fertilizer. So this and so many other things are one of those or few of the things that the government and the ministry has done to stimulate agriculture, especially for 2023 now, season. Now, you, I'll draw you back to where you talk about um, the fertilizer issue. Earlier before the start of the raining season, a lot of farmers cried of the high cost of fertilizer. Mm -hmm. Now, how would we be too sure that uh, the government has actually subsidized a certain amount of money to address that high cost of fertilizer? And is this going to be a continual process uh, of your ministry or the government trying to subsidize farmers? Yes. Actually, the cost of fertilizer is open information in, in, in on the web. If you go and do a research now and say cost of fertilizer per ton, you will see the numbers. As at that time, per ton was 750 US dollars. And this information is open. Nonetheless, we are answerable to the National Assembly and we are answerable to the people. And we have been at the National Assembly, these questions are asked in public, on camera, and we had to submit uh, proof of purchase, all the documentation we have to share with the National Assembly. And, and, and I think it's open information. So yes, the government has subsidized over $1,200 per bag. And, and yeah, that's why this year it was affordable and also accessible. Okay, so poor access to quality inputs and appropriate um, farming and service and also, also market is one of the challenges that farmers face. Now, how or what measures is your ministry um, doing or taking under your leadership to addressing such challenges? Because over the years, farmers mm -hmm. always keep crying of the same issue and it has been a recurring issue all the time. The current issue specifically, which one you say? Um, financial support and yes. access to f farming tools, especially. Farming tools. And market. Thank you. Um, let's start with financial. The government of the Gambia, through a project that we will be launching probably in January, called GAMISA. That is Gambia Initiative for Risk Reduction on Agricultural Lending. This project is already, a director has been appointed and the staff are being put together. What it will do is it is going to guarantee 80% of any farmer's loan from any commercial bank in this country. So now farmers will be able to go to any commercial bank, take a loan, and the government through the project will guarantee 80% of the loan. This way, farmers will not be required to bring the impossible guarantees that is currently required of farmers. Uh, and so we think that is going to definitely solve our problem of lending. But again, if uh, just less than a month ago, um, the giraffe project distributed over four million US dollars. Four million is in the excess of 260 million dollars. And these were all distributed to private sector actors, rice producers and non-rice producers. But they are all private sector players. Mainly, in fact, 11 out of the 19 are all youth and women. So this and the roots project is also operating marching grant. Last year, they gave 39 youth matching grant with a ceiling of 7,500 US dollars. 7,500 US dollars, if you do the maths, it's quite substantial. This year, they are going to give matching grant to 100 individuals in this country, all agribusiness owners. So this and many others are ways we think will help the youth, the women, and the farmers to access credit. And this is something that we intend to do year in, year out. We did it last year. This year, it's been uh, it's taking place, and of course, the Gamisal will launch at the beginning of 2024, and that will be able to take care of our credit issues with the farmers. So I understand, like I said, in 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 April, you launched the giraffe project, mm -hmm. and you supported over 19 SMEs. Mm -hmm. And now we just wanted to know what are some of the conditions and criteria you use mm -hmm. um, to support these SMEs, and. The other thing is, I also interviewed some, some people that yeah. are into poultry who are young people who said they have not benefited from this. So would you, can you kindly take us through? Right. Actually, uh, there will be people who will say they haven't benefited because applicants were over thousands because these are grants. These are not loans. So if you announce giving grants, can you imagine how many people are going to apply? It's a lot. We have nearly 300,000 farmers in this country. So, yes, it's natural that some people did not benefit. The criteria is one, this is World Bank led. And World Bank had their criteria, supported by CPCU, that's our Central Project Coordinating Unit. We also have a project steering committee that had its standard. 
and they work with GCCI, Gambia Chamber of Commerce and Industry. They work with NACOFAG, that is the National Association of Farmers. Uh, they had to go through a whole vigorous screening process. There's a list of criteria that they had to fulfill. And it's, it's very transparent and, and it's, um, it's, it's rigorous. And they even had to go undergo an entrepreneurship training because you don't go and give millions to people and, and uh, when they are not trained to be able to manage that. Secondly, these were individuals who already were into the business. These are farm owners, commercial farm owners, business owners. So the project just came to help them you know, enlarge their business, be able to create a lot more employment, be able to produce a lot more food for our self-sufficiency drive. So these were individuals who were already in the process. So it's, it's a process that, um, that is very transparent and, and I think it was it's led by World Bank and the CPCU. The cost of rice keeps increasing all the time. And we Except for this year. Well, <laughs> it's, still, it's, still in the, it's still in the increase every now and then. Okay. And we have vast lands in the CRR that are absolutely fertile that if well managed yes. and with the right investment would definitely help to at least minimize the cost of um, rice mm -hmm. and also uh, reduce importation. Yes. Now, what is the ministry doing and uh, to make it so that such is addressed? Uh, we understand that support and other fields are dying. Farmers are not even having the required uh, support to to get in to get in this self food sufficiency a reality. Actually, support is dying. I'm hearing it only from you for the first time. Actually, I was in Sapo. One thing you should know is the ministry had a lineup of tractors that are right now in Sapo, and they've been there. We own 50 tractors as the ministry, 20 out of the 50 is dedicated only for that area, only for rice production. That's one. Two, every farmer was supplied with free seeds, high yielding seeds for free. Those farmers were one of those who benefited from the free plowing. One of the projects, that is the rice value chain, did a desilting. I don't know if you'll understand desilting. That is the canals, mm -hmm. to make sure to clean the canals so that the water from the River Gambia can flow easily in and flow out. They desilted over 40 kilometer worth of canals. And over 30 uh, power tillers were distributed by the regional rice value chain. Currently, they are in the process of distributing seven tractors, all only to rice farmers. So there's a lot of support that has been given to the rice farmers in Jahali Pachar area and CRR North. And I think uh, the f figures or information you are kind of laying out now is um, a still one. It probably is three, four years ago. But currently, CRR is it is it reflecting in you know in the actual society? Yes, because that's why I told you that the harvest this year, both for rice, groundnut, and maize, will be the highest for, for the last ten years. So it means it is reflecting because all these things that I mentioned, the fertilizer, the seeds, the plowing, has led to the high productivity for 2023 so it is it is definitely are we going to see um, a reduction in the importation of rice in the country yes we will see a rise in the productivity of rice the amount of rice produced in 2021 22 we will see a lot more being produced compared to last year will that translate to a rise a, a decline in import it has so many variations the population is rising and rising exponentially so are we catching up with that population rise? Our goal as a ministry is to produce more, put a lot more hectare on the production and increase productivity per hectare. The kind of seeds that have been used in this country was only producing two tons or three tons per hectare. With the rice seeds that we introduce, we are producing up to seven or more tons in that one hectare. So it has almost 100% productivity. So our goal is to increase production and productivity, and we are on that track. Really, the trajectory is good. And the population increase has an impact in, in import and export bill. Of course, we have a lot of porous borders. A lot of the rice that get imported also get through transboundary trade. I'm sure you are fully aware of that. Mm -hmm. So uh, that is not going to be our yardstick, whether import is decreased or increased. Our yardstick is going to be, are we producing more year on year out once we are on the right trajectory our goal is to is to produce 
200,000 metric tons of rice per year. Once Gambia produced that, with our mathematics, that should be able to feed 2.5 million people. Whether they import rice, that will now tell us that what is being imported is going to the sub-region. But 200,000 metric tons will be okay to feed our population. And that's our goal. Well, I, I would not want to go along that line now, but uh, we will now shift to the harvest season is almost about to start. Mm -hmm. And last year, we've seen that the ton of grano was around 20,700 the last year. No, which 32,000. Which was not appealing to a lot of farmers, especially in the uh, provincial country. Mm -hmm. Now, what is the package for this year? Are we going to see any improvement, you know, compared to last year? Naturally, you will expect an improvement, given all the factors being equal. Nonetheless, I and the team are scheduled for a meeting on Friday, and the purpose of the meeting is to get the ball rolling as far as the trade season is concerned. Um, and what we are going to talk about will include the price, the date that will start the trade season, and also uh, what kind of message are we going to send to the farmers to be able to sell our produce to the GGC. To the, uh, to the Gambia government so that um, we don't sell all our produce to outside of the Gambia because the government is spending a lot of money to, to support them to do the production. That is the, the plowing and the, and, the, and the subsidized fertilizer. So you cannot collect all that given all the money that government has invested in it and then start to sell it to private dealers or sell it to outside of the, but of the what, Gambia. What, what if government is not ready to actually put on the table something that is really appealing to the farmer? Right. Because, you know, most of these private investors will definitely come in with a better price than the government. And as a farmer, you are looking at where, you know, the, the, f the, the bigger price is. I, yeah, I can understand. But let me say this. I think Gambians need to start being nationalistic. We should look at our interests as a country force. Had those private dealers where were they when fertilizer was being imported why are private dealers not importing fertilizer and then sell it to farmers register them and say okay you we will sell you fertilizer cheap so that you will now sell your ground to us they won't do that we have spent billions not millions i say billions in dallas to be able to subsidize fertilizer so if government spend all that money and then you take those groundnuts and sell them to a private dealer, I think that is a little on Gambia. I mean, we wouldn't be very happy as a country, not me or minister or ministry or even the government in entirety. As a country, I don't think we will be happy to spend all that amount of money to support the farmers. And then somebody come across the border, buy our produce, go and make US dollars out of it. Because these groundnuts, when sold to the government, we export it to the world market. And the country now gets forex. We get foreign currency from that. That is the foreign currency that the country can use now to import rice, import petroleum, and import other things. Because we don't export all those things. It's groundnut that we have. It's our major source of foreign currency and tourism. So it is very important that we sell it to our government. Sell it to GGC. But for the private dealer, and you start doing price comparison, I think it wouldn't help because those people haven't invested anything on the farmer. The government has invested a lot on the farmers. And I think our price will be reasonable. Our price will be competitive in the sub-region. And then um, we think the farmers will respond positively. Well, last year, as you said, this was around 32000 the last year. Can you actually give us a synopsis of the increase for this year um, trade season? In, in terms of percentage added to the last year? Hmm. No, actually, if I give you percentage, I'll give you numbers. Because that is just the basics. Mm. If I tell you 10%, you will just do your calculation would you, would you and you will come up with a number. Would so, a range price for, for farmers who are out there? Yes. They will be very happy to understand that, right. well, this year, the, the government is, or the ministry is actually paying this amount to deter the private investors. Well, one thing I can guarantee you, we will pay better than last year. We will pay a price that is very reasonable. We will pay a price that is very competitive for the sub-region. But I and the team are going to be meeting on Friday and we will be working on all the factors surrounding the trade season, including the price. And that is when an official price will be announced at the right time and the right place. But for now, I can just assure you that the price will be comparatively better than last year. It will be competitive for the regional pricing and it will be reasonable.
Well, Honorable Minister, I would now ask if you have anything to add on to this interview, cognizant of the time is of the essence. Mm. Well, first, we have to thank you for coming and giving us the opportunity to talk to our farmers and talk to the general population. Um, we thank His Excellency, the President, for creating this, and this democratic environment where we have a lot of media houses and one of the media houses for the network it happens to be a very genuine and credible news outlet that we hold dear and we whatever information we see there we take it to be very credible and i think um, that that is very very important we thank him for for that and i also thank all the gambian farmers and the staff of the ministry of agriculture especially extension staff that are living and in the villages working with the farmers impacting knowledge and 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 doing life-changing activities. So uh, we must thank our farmers. Do you have one key message for the farmers out there that would want to hear something message. very something very enticing from, from the Honorable Minister ahead of the trade season? Well, the information that I want to give to the farmers, I think I've said it already. That is, we will try to get the trade season earlier than last year or earlier than our counterparts. The price is very like going to be better than last year and we wouldn't be buying on credit the ggc bought last year on cars and they will do whatever it takes so that farmers do not struggle to get their money and farmers do not struggle to travel long distance to sell their products uh, we'll try to get to them as soon as possible and make it as easy as possible well, farmers would not have to buy t to work a long way to get their monies and the government will actually buy, you know, on cash without credit. Well, Honorable Minister, thank you for this opportunity. Sorry. Uh, it was really wonderful to talk to you and we look forward to Sorry. doing a lot of fact check on some of these information and That's we look forward to going out there to also talk to the farmers on the ground season. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good to see you. Well, good afternoon. We are coming to the live